And I'll talk about the connection between Young Tableau and Crystals for about four hours. So I will give three lectures from today. And I hope I can cover two thirds by tomorrow. And then the rest of one third will be covered on the last day, Friday. So my plan is the following. First, I will talk about the general linear Lie algebra GLM. And Second, I'll talk about the quantum version of UQ gen. And I forgot third and fourth. <laughs> mm, that's right. The third will be the connection between Young Tableau. And crystals. And finally, I will cover the tensor product or little Richardson decomposition rule. Richardson rule. Okay. So maybe today I will cover one, one half, one and one half, two thirds, I mean three halves, and then maybe tomorrow I will cover up to. Section three, and on Friday, I hope to be able to cover the final section. So my focus, well, I will focus on the senior level undergraduate student or the first year graduate student level at KAIST. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let me start. First, consider the linear, general linear Lie algebra GLM. And well, when I was young, the most absurd comments by mom was have dinner first and watch TV. But when you have dinner, when you are finished with dinner, then the, the interesting program is over, right? <laughs> so at that time, I realized that the, usually the binary, binary operation is not commutative. <coughs> and in high school days, of course, it were maybe you guys must have the same story in high school days that uh, well, being a high school student, just focus on studying. Once you are accepted to Seoul National University or KAIST, <laughs> then once you enter the KAIST, then the girls will be in line for you. But uh, well, it's already <laughs> almost May. <laughs> Do they line for you? <laughs> no. It never happens. So usually the operation is never usually there are many, many examples of binary operations that are not commutative. But still, most of the cases, the operations are still associative. But strangely enough, on R3, if we define, if we recall the cross product, then it is not commutative and moreover it is not associative so it satisfies the following rule which is called the Jacobi identity and if you Investigate, or if you look at this a little bit more carefully, then what we can observe is x cross y cross z is the same as, hmm, well, if you move this, then by the anti commutativity, this will become x cross y cross z. And if you move this, then it will, it will become negative z cross x cross y. That's due to anti-commutativity, it will become this way. But you need to add this again. Right? This means the cross product is not associative. 
And this term can be considered as error term or correction term, which measure the non-associativity of the operation. So actually, we are encountered with uh, some examples, some very natural examples of operations, which is not commutative nor associative. Okay. And that's the motivation where algebraic motivation for the definition of real algebras. So, a real algebra over C is a vector space say L together with the bilinear binary operation which is usually denoted by bracket that satisfies the following two identities. First is the anti-commutativity. And second one is the Jacobi identity. have seen this erosion example. <laughs> there are many examples of binary operations which satisfy these conditions. Okay. And the Jacobi identity tells us how non-associative it is. So this will be the measure of non-associativity. And typical examples is the following. Well, actually, what I'm going to talk about, well, most of what I'm going to talk about will be applied to a general case of cat smooth algebras. But in these lectures, I will just focus on general linear algebras. So consider an associative algebra. Suppose a is an associative algebra. So there is multiplication which is associative and it is a ring. Then, well, let us define for two elements, we define the commutator or bracket of A and B to be AB minus BA. If it is a commutative algebra, then the bracket is always zero, trivially zero. But well, as we have seen before, there are many examples of non-commutative operations. So if we define bracket as it is, so then the, the same space and with this new operation becomes a Lie algebra. So maybe just once and for all in your life, you may want to check whether it satisfies <laughs> this situation. So first thing is almost trivial. Okay. And usually this is denoted by A minus, meaning that uh, taking commutate data, we, can, we get a Lie algebra. So, as a special example, suppose V is a vector space over C, and consider the associative algebra consists of endomorphisms of V. Okay? And then by taking composition, it is an associative algebra. So if we take the bracket, 
if this becomes a real algebra, and it is usually denoted by GRV, and it is called the general linear real algebra. In my lectures, I will focus on the special case of n dimensional vector space Cn. And if we consider general linear Lie algebra on Cn, it will be denoted by Gn. So it is endomorphism of Cn. And we can identify this with, in a usual way, n by n matrices of C. Okay. And this is the main target of our study. As a vector space, it has a basis, which is the, called the elementary matrices. So here, east of ij means the matrix with ij entry 1 and other entries 0. Okay? So here, ij entry is 1 and other entries are 0. And wait, to study general linear algebra, let us pick up special matrix. What? Any question? I know my handwriting is bad. <laughs> but since childhood days, there is a saying that the every genius has bad handwriting. <laughs> and of course, the students would say the converse is not true. <laughs> but we also know you need to satisfy necessary condition to be a genius. Once you have a good handwriting, then you can never be a genius. <laughs> <laughs> so at least you need to satisfy necessary condition. But let us limit by E sub i, the elementary matrix whose i, i plus first position is 1 and other entries are 0 and f sub i to be the transpose. And we will use k sub i, the diagonal matrices. Okay. Maybe to be careful, j runs from 1 to n. But here, i runs from 1 to n minus 1. And for some cases, we will use special diagonal matrices EI, which is KI minus KI plus 1. Then, as a Lie algebra, we can observe the general linear Lie algebra GLN is generated by, as a Lie algebra, E sub I, F sub I, And K sub J as a Lie algebra, so as a Lie algebra, and they satisfy the following defined relations with defined relations. So this is just matrix multiplication. And you take the commutative of matrices, so it's easy to check. So here, uh, K is commute 
with each other. These are diagonal matrices, so they must commit. And E sub i and F sub j all must commute. And Ki minus Ki plus 1. And Kj taking bracket with E sub i, what we get is E sub i if j is i and minus e i plus 1 if j is i plus 1 and 0 otherwise. <coughs> so as I said, here what we do is just to take mat matrix multiplication and commutator. So I mean, you take diagonal matrix choice position and uh, here is i, then i, i plus 1, here, right? i, i plus 1. This is e i, e sub i, and take the matrix multiplication and also minus the other way around. Then it's easy to check. But you, you need to check, but it's easy to check. And similarly, if we take commutator with the case of ij and negative fi, then we get the similar things. Negative of fi, if j is i, and f i plus 1, if j is i plus 1, and 0 otherwise. And moreover, if you take the commutator with the e sub i and e sub j, then we will get 0 if i and j are far apart. But if i and j are close enough, then we need to take the bracket once more to get 0 if i minus j is 1. I don't, but the, anyway, if you really want to check, then once you, I forget, I think this is like delta I, I L E J K minus delta J L J K E I J E I L something like this plus minus <laughs> minus plus maybe so if you memorize this formula then you may check these things easily okay. and same thing happens for F. Okay, so first, general linear Lie algebra can be defined to be the Lie algebra of n by n matrices. That's usual definition. But in terms of generators and relations, it can be defined to be the Lie algebra <coughs> generated by these symbols with these defining relations. Okay. And uh, as you have experienced before, the advantage of uh, defining some algebraic structures in terms of generator and relations lies in the fact that it can be generalized to more abstract situation. So in this case, it can be generalized to semi-simple algebras. And furthermore, it can be generalized to Katzenberg algebras, which are usually infinite dimensional Lie algebras. So we consider the Lie algebra GLM 
has the Lie algebra generated by these elements, symbols, with defined relations. Okay. Now, for any algebraic structures, it is natural to define sub-algebraic structures and the maps between algebraic structures, which is which are called homomorphisms. So, if L and L prime are Lie algebras, <coughs> then a linear map Phi from L to L prime is called the Lie algebra homomorphism. <coughs> if it preserves a bracket, okay. so if bracket phi of bracket x of i is the same as bracket of phi x and phi y. Okay. Then for a homomorphism, we can define monomorphism, epimorphism, and isomorphism. And corner and image are naturally defined. Here corner is the corner of vector space transformations. Okay. And also, if L is a Lie algebra, then a subspace L prime of L is called a Lie subalgebra. If L prime itself is a Lie algebra with the induced bracket from that of L. Okay. So if L prime itself is a Lie algebra. So for that purpose, if L prime is closed under the bracket, then the other conditions are naturally satisfied. So we can say that if x, y lies in L prime for all x, y, and l prime. And we may denote this as inequality. And second, a least subalgebra l prime is an ideal. If, well, it is closed on the bracket. Maybe, can I use I? For all x in L and for all y in I. Okay. We don't have to check the two-sided idea, two-sided condition because we're due to the anti-commutativity, one side condition is enough for two side condition. So, so we have the notion of Lie subalgebra and ideal. So typical example is the following. First, for a Lie So if it satisfies this condition, it is closed on the, the bracket. So it is subalgebra. Yes. So for example, if phi is a Lie algebra homomorphism, then corner of phi is an idea of L. So let me use the normal subalgebra for idea. And image of phi is a subalgebra for L prime. 
subalgebra of L prime. This is uh, typical examples. Another example is our object of subject of study for GLN. And maybe we can use German G for this. And consider N plus to be the upper triangular matrices. Actually, strictly upper triangular matrices. Which one? L prime. Here, yes, I assume the of vector space. I is also assumed. Yes, yes. And let us note by n minus to be the set of strictly lower triangular matrices. And we usually denote by H the diagonal matrices, the space of diagonal matrices. And then these are all subalgebras of L. Okay? So and moreover we have so called triangular decomposition as subalgebras. Okay? Of course, one matrix can be decomposed as sum of lower triangular matrices, diagonal matrix, and strictly upper triangular matrix. The point is that this decomposition is a direct sum of subalgebras. Okay? And moreover, if we use some other notation, well, but they are not ideals. Okay? For example, M plus is a subalgebra of L, but it's not an ideal. Because if you take the bracket with M minus, we get diagonal, etc. But if we restrict to so called Borel subalgebra, which is the sum of diagonal matrices and strictly upper triangular matrices, so this is the weakly upper triangular matrices. Lie algebra weakly upper triangular matrices. Then in this case, n plus is an idea of B plus. Okay. Because if you take the commutator of a diagonal matrices with upper, strictly upper triangular matrices, because we are taking commutator, not the matrix multiplication enough. Well, even matrix multiplication, <laughs> we, we will get strictly upper triangular matrices. Okay. Now, so we have defined the notion of real algebra, homomorphisms, subalgebras, and ideas. This is a decomposition as a least subalgebra. Of course, as a vector space, yes, but also, yes. Uh, again, this uh, decomposition is as a Lie algebra, or least subalgebra, yes. What is the script? M? Yeah, what is the script? H. This is H. <laughs> this is German H. In tech language, math frack. <laughs> Later language, yes. I think that the reason why they use German and plus and, and minus, et cetera, is the, the, the main contribution for classification of finite dimensional simple real algebra over complex field were made by German mathematician Killing. So I think that's why it's German influence. But somehow, what I'm studying real algebra, this is not a lie. 
It's a Norwegian mathematician. So firstly, I'm talking about killing. Hmm. Quite fierce field. And the, for, this is cat. And another one is moody. And, uh, so moody cats, if you make a lie, lie then moody cats will kill you, something like that. So. Ah, I hastily erased it, but I forgot that it's being taped anyway. I was about to say, don't tell anybody else. <laughs> but it's already taped. OK, so we uh, introduced the notion of realgebras, homomorphism, subalgebras, and ideas. So the next step is to study, to, to be introduced to the notion of representations. Okay? So let L be a Lie algebra, and V be a vector space over C. Then a representation of Lie algebra L on V is the following. So a representation of L on V is defined to be a Lie algebra homomorphism. usually denoted by rho, from L to the Lie algebra of V. That means the Lie algebra, general linear Lie algebra on V. So endomorphism algebra. But on the other hand, we have the notion of L module. So vector space V is called a, an L module if there is a bilinear map from L cross V to V, which is usually denoted by dot. So the pair X and V is mapped on x dot v on v satisfying the following conditions. So it is a bilinear map in the sense that it is linear for both first variable and second variable. So linear on L and V. But also if we take the bracket and let the bracket act on V and then it is the same as the action of commutators. Okay. So we have two notions. A Lie algebra homomorphism from L to G GLV, which is defined to be the representation of L on V. Another one is an L module V. And then it is a typical exercise for under students that these two are actually equivalent. So two definitions are actually equivalent via this equation. So if you have rho, then consider rho of x, which is an endomorphism on v, then we can define rho of x on v, which is an element on v. We define this to be the action of x on v. Conversely, if you have an action, then we define a Lie algebra homomorphism rho via this equation. Then Thanks to this property and the condition that rho should be Lie algebra homomorphism, which preserves the bracket, we can easily verify that these two are actually equivalent. 
so in many cases, we often say that V is a representation of L. Okay. So, so when we say that rho is a representation, then we have an L module and vice versa. So what is representation theory? Then we can say that it is the study of the structure and properties of L which are reflected on vector space V. Okay. So suppose we have a real algebra L, then we would like to understand structures and properties of L. So then there are various vector spaces, different vector spaces, and let us study the properties that are reflected on different various vector spaces. And that's the representation theory. Okay? And when I was an autism professor, I usually gave this example. To study the algebra, uh, if my height is, say, 5'9", and weight is 160 pounds, it's a structure theory. Um, but uh, how do I behave under the stress, or when you lose money, when you play card games, then that's your representation theory, okay? So how my well, internal structures are reflected on various situations, that's your representation theory. But of course, in later days, I would give an example of, say, Kim Tae-hee, and it's different soap opera or uh, CF commercials or uh, movies, that's your representation theory. So, we have defined the notion of representations. Now, the, well, a representation of a Lie algebra is again an algebraic structure. Then, we tend to study the maps between representations and also the notion of sub-modules, etc. So, if V and W are L modules, so representations of the same D algebra L, then a linear map, say phi, from V to W is a, an L module homomorphism if we preserve the action of L on V to the action of L on W, right? So if, oops, I did not state anything, is an L module homomorphism, if phi preserve the action of L. So this star is the action of L on V, and this star is the action of L on W. Maybe I don't have to remind you that, but as a teacher, <laughs> teachers are usually picky. And so suppose we have an L module V. Okay. Then a subspace. W of V is an L submodule if it is closed on the action of L. Okay. So if X dot W lie, lies inside W for all X. Okay. So W itself becomes an L module. Now, once we have sub module, then we can define the notion of quotient module. So, in this case, consider the space of left cosets. Uh, 
And then this quotient space becomes an L module by the natural action. And the point is that this action is very defined because W is a submodule. Well, in the case of groups or real reverse, the reason why we consider the notion of normals of groups and ideas, uh, the reason is that we would like to define the quotient groups and quotient, say, algebra in the same way. And if we deal with the usual subgroup or usual subalgebra, then the this quotient map is not necessarily well defined. Okay. We need the notion of normal subgroups and the notion of ideas. But for submodules, well, it is naturally well defined. So it's easy to check. Thanks to this. <coughs> so, I don't know. My idea is that, well, why do you study prime numbers? To understand integers, you want to decompose as a product of primes. And if you understand the primes, then you can understand whole numbers. But usually, it's very difficult to understand primes. <laughs> Even what are primes is. So the, the reason why we study submodules and quotient modules is the same thing. We would like to study small object or more essential intrinsic object, intrinsic object, okay? And so, if V does not have any submodules, then it is called irreducible. If there is no submodules, other than zero and V itself. Okay. Then it is called irreducible. <coughs> and if things are similar to integers, uh, then any representation will be completely reducible. So V is called completely reducible. If V is a direct sum of irreducible submodules. Okay. And well maybe Why is it called completely reducible? Yeah. So, uh, reducible, uh, or completely from I, uh, let me just write down here, okay? <laughs> I was just about, I didn't ask him to ask this question, but. <laughs> so, V is called decomposable. If V can be written as sum of two submodules, proper submodules, okay? Here, W and, I mean, U, this is U, <laughs> okay? W and U are proper submodules. They are different from V. So V is called indecomposable if we cannot decompose into two proper submodules, some of. But an indecomposable module may not be reducible. Even though it cannot be decomposed as some of direct sum of submodules, still it can have submodules. Okay, that's the difference. Complete reducible means it it can be expressed as a direct sum of irreducible submodules, and every module can be expressed as direct sum of indecomposed submodules by definition, but. An indecomposable module may not be irreducible. 
That's the difference. So that's why it is called completely reducible. Reducible means it is so much. But that does not necessarily mean that it can be expressed as sum of complementary submodules. That's true in for vector space, but not for representations. So, we have introduced basic notions of L modules and reducible modules, complete reducible modules. Therefore, now we can talk about the basic and fundamental problems of representation theory. Simple example. <laughs> <laughs> Are they all finite? Um, <laughs> yes, I, I, I can do it, but then instead, I think it's more, I think, easily understandable. For example, consider groups, okay? So G6, this is the direct product of G2 and G3, okay? And so we may view this as an example of completely use of modules. But consider S3, okay? S3 has A3, which is isomorphic to G3, okay? And uh, this is simple, right? Yes, yes, yes. But yeah, I understand the situation. Yes, so this is the situation. Yeah. Okay. Example for Lie algebras. <laughs> I think the best example is SL2. So this is 3 by 3 without trace. Trace legs. 3 by 3, traceless matrices. And then, it will have the following form, right? Because trace is 0. I'm sorry. <laughs> good, good point. <laughs> When I was a graduate student, one of my supervisors told me, well, to be a good teacher, you need to make mistakes during the class deliberately <laughs> to check whether students pay attention or not. <laughs> but since I make mistakes naturally, <laughs> I think I'm a natural teacher. <laughs> of course, in my department, there is natural teacher. Professor Tohan Kim. His birthday is May 15th, Teacher's Day. <laughs> he was born on Teacher's Day. That's his claim. So he's a naturally born <laughs> teacher. But so let us note this by three generators. So here, what? 0, 0, 1, 0. For C plus C, 1, 0, 0, minus 1 for diagonal and the C zero one zero zero. Okay. And consider polynomial say V as polynomial ring. So this is the infinite dimension. And let, so it is called F, this is called H, this is called E, okay? E action 1 to be 0, and F action 1 to be P. And what? Let H action 1. 
some non-negative integer, say m, m1, okay? Then I think this is representation. Jia, you go, man, yeah? Is this correct? So, in terms of basis, 1, t, t square, t cube, etc. Uh, this is not enough. <laughs> so that's right. Okay, this is F. Okay. So let me change. <laughs> so T to the K to be T to the K minus 1. T to the K to be T to the K plus 1. Now I need to define this carefully. The best way is what? H T to the K is E F minus P T to the K. Then. 지로? 뭐냐 이거? T K 플러스 지로. Then what? What am I going to talk? This is non-decomposable. No, no, this is reducible representation. <laughs> yes, uh, this is a sub-representation. That's what I'm going to say. Is it true? No. Not reducible. Huh? This, you are going to find an example which is not reducible. Reducible it reproduction. It's reducible yes. because it is indecomposable. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes, indecomposable, reducible representation. Reducible representation. Yes. But, yeah, you were actually telling me, right? Let me give you an abstract example. <laughs> So suppose mm, V, yes, I didn't explain you the. Mm. Good, good, good. <laughs> He's <is> correct. <laughs> we can ask him. Yes. <laughs> so the same example, V T. Okay. Then what? E acts as uh, partial derivatives or DDT. Young Machi. <laughs> so F acts as multiplication by T. And H acts as what? EF minus F. F. F e, so E F. Is it identity? So M times identity. M is an unnatural integer. Okay. And then I think this is an infinite dimensional representation, which is indecomposable. But after M, here, after M. This is big sub module. And if you take this quotient, then this becomes m plus 1 dimensional irreducible module. This is the basic example. Is it, is it? Yes. Does it make an example if you take two by two matrices uh -huh. that are upper diagonal uh -huh. with ones on the diagonal and anything on the top right? Hmm. But what you are saying is V is a two dimensional space yes. and take matrix multiplication. Yes. Mm. Uh, what is the action? I, I'm not sure whether it is even co closed. So zero, zero, one, zero. Is it okay? Seems to be not okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, this is what? Zero? Zero? A? 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 Something like that? A plus what? I don't know how to multiply. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not closed under the actions. 
So I think th this is best best example because this is so called Verma module, which I was about to actually ex explain. Finite dimensional representations. Uh, actually, finite dimensional representations of general linear algebra is always completely reducible. Uh, for semi simple algebra, the same is true. That's a vice theorem, complete reducibility theorem, yes. And usually, uh, sorry, so let me. I think you need that kind of. Stitch. <laughs> what I thought was, well, I asked Professor Dong Sukim that let me have 90 minutes per each day, but I actually did not think that way. I mean, I thought 75 minutes is enough, <laughs> but it seems actually 90 minutes is necessary. <laughs>